All right, it's time for pick 67. The Lions are officially on the clock again. Detroit so far, they've really hit the nail on both picks, the first two picks so far. Like 67, there's still a good amount of talent still there. Like Gallimore's still there. Niang is still there. Beatis is still there. Donovan People Jones is still there. Sag Bond is still there. So much talent still on the board here. Like Lions can, like I said, with the third, like the 35th pick, the Lions can go a lot of different directions with this pick. You know, very like we can go a lot of different directions. There's still some solid talent here on the talent on the board. We can go here. We still even have the option to trade down in this round. Because for the Lions, we have a we have we do have another third round pick in a little bit after this pick. And the Lions are about to go to commercial. We're going to commercial. So so far, you know, very solid so far, you know. The DeAndre Swift pick is in and during commercial break. The pick is now in. We'll find out who the pick is after commercial ends. You know, DeAndre Swift, that's been a really solid pickup. You know, and the ironic thing is that he wore seven at Georgia, which was the exact same number that Matt Stafford wore, too. So, yeah, I guess that's why they call it Lucky Sevens. Yeah. But, hmm, yeah. And here's the crazy thing about the pick so far, last pick. Um, the Lions' entire backfield is all SEC running backs because on Johnson played with Alburn. Uh, Bo Scarborough played for Alabama, and now DeAndre Swift played for Georgia. I mean, that's a very solid running backfield. Now, if now if Carryon Johnson can learn to stay healthy for once in his life, that backfield could be deadly if we can get some old linemen and open the holes up enough for him, and they can make plays. Like you know, Carryon Johnson, he's a solid running back too, but he can't stay healthy. That's been the problem. Um, I say this pick, I might say we should address the trenches, you know. I'd say either go offensive line or even go defensive line. Like, Gallimore's there, Niang's still there, Beatis is still there. Like, there's a lot of playmakers still here. Like, we even got Devin Duvernay still there. Um, in terms, I do think the Lions should address quarterback, but I, I would wait till tomorrow afternoon to address it. Because there's a really good quarterback in the fourth round that I think the Lions should target, and I've been very high on. Someone that could groom into um to become Matt Stafford's eventual successor if we develop him correctly. And if you've been paying attention to all my draft previews and mocks and all my and all, all the build up I've had for the draft the last couple weeks, the last uh, this entire month or so, you'll know exactly which QB I'm referring to. Yeah, the disappointing thing is that it's sad that J Chase Claypool is on the board still. I'm shocked he went that high. Like, there was a chance he was going second round. But, damn, I didn't think he would go that high to at 49 to the Steelers. I thought he would be, like, a late second rounder, like, in the 50s. Like, in the mid to late 50s. You know, but, hey, you know, it's still a deep receiver draft. There's a lot of good receivers still on the board, like I mentioned. Donovan People jones Devin Duvernay, even Quintez Cepas is still on the board. Tyler Johnson is even still on the board, and we're back. Hey, don't forget now the question is, what will the Lions do with the 67th pick? Who's the pick going to be? And then in a little bit, we'll find out what the Lions do with the 85th, if they're going to trade down with the 85th or trade back, trade up with the 85th. But they got a decent amount of draft capital if they want to trade up. I mean, they traded up last year in the third. We'll have to see what they do. So, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be a trenches pick. I think it's going to be an either an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman. I think you got to address the trenches with this one. And then with the later pick, maybe it'd get a receiver to, to maybe to pair with um, Kenny Galladay. You know, you know this pick, they can go a lot of different directions like the 35th pick. Let's see who it is. With the 67th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Julian Okora, linebacker. Oh, so they went with Romeo Okwara's little brother. Oh, so we got an Okwara reunion. 
Oh! So Romeo Aquara and Julian Aquara are now on the same team. Oh boy! And we get a and it's a linebacker. Very interesting. I'm wondering how to how they're gonna work with the jerseys now. I think anybody that has a Romeo Aquara jersey is probably going to need to get a new one. So that says R. Romeo Aquara on the back, and then the other one says J. Aquara. So now we got the Aquara brothers together. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, we still have Romeo Aquara, too, at defensive end, too. Romeo had issues staying healthy last year also because the Lions got plagued with injuries. Now, you know, um, Julian Aquara is going to have a lot of hype. He's going to have a lot of hype being on Romeo's little brother. I mean, if he can play almost exactly or better than Romeo, that would then that would be really great. You know, he's an edge rusher. You know, he can play at linebacker defensive end. You know, a good compliment here. So, you know, it does address the trenches. So, yeah, very interesting pick. I dig it. It's a decent pick, so we got a reunion. So, not bad. No, I've had mixed feelings about the pick, but hey, I'm, a, I'm okay with it. So, yeah, decent pickup. And Gallimore's still on the board. Yeah, Gallimore continues to fall. I thought Gallimore would have been gone by now. He's still there. Damn. Oh, uh, yeah. A very good pick. A uh, decent pickup. We'll have to see how he does. You know, definitely somebody for the, maybe in the long run. We'll have to see. But, yeah. Yeah, see you all back in a little bit here for the 85th pick. But, yeah, that's all I got to say. See you in a little bit. Peace.